Hi, Samson. Welcome to the Bay Area. What's good? Um, my name's Matt Barrows with The Athletic. I'm just wondering what uh, the 49ers have told you about your role with them. Obviously, you were an outside linebacker with the Rams. Um, what are you with the 49ers? Uh, I'm going to be rolling from what I've been told, and I'm expected to be on that field. And... Yeah, I'm excited just to hear that because it's just uh, more of an opportunity for me to showcase what I could do. And I'm probably going to play uh, DN or whatever position that they want me to play. I'll do all that. It don't matter. It's Samson. This is Cam Inman of the San Jose Mercury News. Uh, kind of on that front, you know, a lot of people want to see a sack artist in the NFL. Do you consider yourself one of them and, and somebody that's going to blossom into that role with the 49ers? Of course. Of course. Samson Matt and Aoka. Okay. Area. Um, how far back does your interaction with the 49ers go? Did did you talk to them a lot four years ago coming out when I'm sure they were up there uh looking at, at KB and, and Cooper Cup? Um um I didn't really talk to them back then. I kinda just like I think I only talked to like one or two teams, if I remember right. The rest of it I just told my agent just to handle it because when it comes to those things I don't really I don't really try to focus on it because then it just like brings more stress to me and I'm not trying to do that. Hey, Samson, uh, a lot of people remember you by uh, your game against the, the Chiefs, um, uh, epic game. Do people come up to you and, and still talk about that? Uh, and if so, does that ever get old or, or is it always nice to rehash, rehash that game? I mean, it would be nice to rehash after I'm done playing, but right now it's getting old, you know, because I'm just trying to move on to uh, move on from it. And right now that I got a bigger role here, I'm trying to just like see if I could do that every week, you know. Hey, Samson, Jennifer Lee Chan with NBC Sports. How much did joining Nick Bosa and D'Amico Ryan's influence your decision to come to the 49ers? Uh, man, it was huge because I'm like, damn, just to play across from them and I'm I'm getting to uh, learn like a different side of the ball just playing DN, you know, and how they play and what I've seen on film. I'm just like, yeah, that's, that's someone I definitely want to play next to and it'll just motivate me just to make sure that I'm always on my toes, you know what I'm saying? Just to make sure that uh, I'm not holding the team back or any of that, like I'm helping to improve it. Hi, Samson. I'm David Lombardi from The Athletic. Uh, did you talk to Kendrick Bourne at all before uh, deciding to sign with the 49ers or since then? And, and what, he's, what has he told you uh, about the team? And did he recommend that you sign with them? Uh, I didn't talk to him beforehand, but after he was, uh, was low-key salty because he's like, damn, when I'm leaving, you coming. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, he was definitely happy for me. He was like, yeah, it's definitely going to fit your energy and just who you are. And uh, you know, I'm saying that I'm going, I'm going to enjoy it, you know. And so far, I have, and I know I'm gonna make more memories on the field just being on this team. And everyone talks about him and how he's a high energy guy. And he, I'm just like, bro, that's that's just been my homie since since high school, you know. So it's awesome, it's awesome for him where he's going. It's kind of unfortunate that we missed each other right here. Hey, Samson, I'm Chris Biederman uh, with the Sacramento Bee. Um, a couple years ago, you had a sack of Jimmy Garoppolo where you beat George Kittle um, in, in pass protection. I'm just curious what your impressions are of uh, what it's like going against him in, in that situation and uh, whether or not you're looking forward to going against him in practice. Definitely looking forward to going against him in practice because it's like you always got to be on your toes for him because he's, he's going he's gonna to give you everything that he's got, every rep. And uh Felt good to get that sack on him, but I was like, "Damn, I know he's coming back harder, so I gotta stay. On, I gotta stay on my guard." So it's gonna be fun to, to see him out here because every day is gonna be something different, you know. Because I know that he's a higher energy guy on the field as well, so I can't wait. Samson, I want to circle back to the sack artist comment. What what makes you a sack artist? What what are your traits? Is it is it a quick first step? Is it your hand movement, technician, speed? What is it? 
Definitely not a technician, because I've seen film. I'm just like, I know I'm not a technician, but it's just the effort, you know what I'm saying, just being relentless and always trying to find a way to get to that quarterback, because that's, that's why I really enjoy is getting to the quarterback and taking him down, because that just stops the whole momentum for everything that the offense is doing. So I think that's, that's the number one thing is the high motor. Hey, Samson, Kyle Posey, Niners Nation. I know it helps to have a bunch of good players on the roster, but how much did a fit of the 49ers play a part in your decision, just as far as, you know, using your skill set from rushing the pass and a drop in coverage? And then my follow-up to that is, you mentioned being a technician. Uh, Chris Kosirik and Nick Bosa, like, do you feel like they'll be able to help you further along that? Oh, uh, yeah, they'll, they'll definitely help me uh, with just being, like, technique sound because there's a lot of stuff that I still got to learn. And... Uh, I've already started uh, talking to uh, to Coach K, and he's just trying to make sure that I get my first step down because he knows I'm fast. And he's like, if you get that first step down, you're gonna be skyrocketing, shooting out of there, shooting out uh, out of your stance, just getting to the quarterback even that much faster. And just to uh, have those uh, type of people around me with him and Bosa, I'm just like, yeah, I'm just gonna watch and and learn, and just ad- adapt and overcome everything and just get to that quarterback faster. Having played against the 49ers offense for the, the past four seasons, what's what kind of dilemmas do they put defenses in and how difficult was it to prepare for that offense and kind of a follow-up on that, did that play any role and why this is such an attractive spot for you, just knowing what's going on on the other side of the ball too? I mean, yeah, playing them – the only thing that made it really difficult was that they motioned every play. That's that's about it. But other than that, the offenses were kind of similar in a way with the Rams because they they came from kind of like the same uh, way way of teaching, and so it wasn't really hard just to uh, get used to like how they were playing. But I definitely had to get uh, ready for it because all they were doing was motioning every play. <laughs> We know a little bit about your background from what we can see on your Wikipedia page and, and whatnot, but um, maybe explain what your what your sweatshirt is and what it represents. Uh, this sweatshirt is a foundation that I started last year, TNS Foundation, um, named after my mom and pops, uh, Tobias and Stella. And all we're trying to do is just help the uh, people of Nigeria with humanitarian needs because I know that Nigeria could be uh, – it's supposed to look like Dubai, but it it doesn't because it's getting exploited. So just to, like, go back there and just, like, help my people out a little bit in any way I can, whether that's, like, giving them food, giving them school clothes, giving them uh, uh, soccer balls just to play around, just to make sure that they know that there's someone here that actually does care for them. Samson, along with Nick Bosa, there's Javon Kinlaw and Eric Armstead. What would you say about this defensive line room that makes it so exciting? Yeah, I saw Ken Law not too long ago, actually. I felt really small next to him. <laughs> but I was like, yeah, man, this is a massive front. And uh, just uh, just after talking to Coach K and, like, what he wants um, out of his players, I'm just like, yeah, we're going to be getting, at, uh, getting after it, just being relentless after the ball, wherever it is, getting after the quarterback. If it's running, we're stuffing every gap just to make it easier for the people uh, behind us, the, all the linebackers and all the DBs, just to make it easier for them to just to see where the ball is. We'll do the last one. Yeah, just curious if uh, what, what your conversations have been like with D'Amico Ryan so far, and if you've noticed that, um, I don't know, is, is he a little bit more relatable given that he's, he's not too far removed from, uh, from his playing career? Yeah, definitely. Um, his energy is uh, kind of like mine in a way. Off the field, is like nine calm, nice, calm, and uh, uh, just um, straight at you. You know what I'm saying? Like he just says exactly what he needs from you, and I like that. You know, because on the field, that's when I really turn on the Jets, and uh, off the field, that's when I like kind of like make sure that everything is sound. You know, and I feel like that's the same way that he is. Make sure you subscribe.